Uh, all right, let us begin because we it just and and we are going to begin tonight with the funniest fun Nine. thing to happen. I, I I want to say since since DashCon, maybe oh, maybe even funnier that th this was amazing. This is not it's gonna it's even funnier because it's gonna be in history books. Someone's gonna have to teach this. Sh a lot. You mean DashCon is not going to be in history books? If only. <laughs> but uh, let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Era audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff for a little segment we like to call, or bring it back here for a little segment we like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? And Catherine is here. Thank you. I, I want to shout out for Catherine. She's, she's always giving me links. She's just working a work schedule. She's doing a lot of stuff to get her shit together, but... She always, well, most time finds time to get here to get us links, and we appreciate it. And you guys out there who send us stuff, I appreciate it, too. Um, all right, we're going to begin this story. I'm going to have to give you a little bit of a setup here. Because we're doing this for posterity. Um, maybe someone in a few years is going to come and look this up and be like, what happened? We'll tell you. It was Saturday afternoon. The president was golfing. And uh, he sent out a tweet. <laughs> now keep in mind the election's gone down the counting is in process it's not looking good for the president they're trying to lay this bullshit groundwork for this fraud bullshit which has no basis in reality I want to stress that and this tweet comes out from the president and he says there's a press conference coming up in Philadelphia the Four Seasons which you know okay they have press conferences hotels because that's where you, know, sure. you have convention facilities and whatnot. And so reporters got their shit together and they started to head the Four Seasons Philadelphia when suddenly that tweet disappeared. Where did it go? Well, it was replaced with another one oh. that said the press conference was at Four Seasons Total <clears throat> Landscaping. <clears throat> Obviously. And the entire media. Wait, wait, what? I think the entire country. They started like, Googling where? this. They started Googling this shit. They started looking it up. And, um, turns out, yes, Rudy Giuliani, America's mayor, <laughs> was holding a press conference regarding the election integrity. <laughs> At the Four Seasons Total Landscaping Service in Northeast Philadelphia. Um, now, I want to just to give you an idea of what's going on at this place. Four Seasons Total Landscaping is not in the most upscale part of town. Where there's nothing wrong with that. However, they are positioned directly across the street from a crematorium. And next door to an adult bookstore. <laughs> so to set the stage for for this press conference, and and here's here's really Giuliani. You see him there with all the the signs behind him. But yeah. here's the, the 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 bigger, larger pulled out picture. I'm gonna see that on Twitter here. There, there's the full picture here. I'll try and uh, shrink it. No, no, no. But but a picture. Stupid, <laughs> stupid Twitter. Bring the picture up there. Yeah, th th there's the full pulled out picture. They're standing in front of the garage door of the landscaping service. I I am I assume they brought their own podium. Yeah. And PA system. I don't think landscaping services have a lot of press conferences generally. So he's trying to give this serious con this serious press conference with the wafting smell of the burning dead. <laughs> while others are streaming in and out of the titty booths. And then... And then... Halfway through... Halfway through... Every network called the election for the other guy. Every network called it for Biden. And someone... And the point, press started to leave. They started to leave. And someone told Giuliani, he says, they've called it. And he says, who? And they say the networks. And that's when Giuliani lost his shit. And a talking point was born. Oh, the networks! 
the network's called it. Oh my God, the network. And he just, he, and he, it was one of those ones where it was a drill tweet. I'm not owned. I'm not owned as yeah. I slowly shrink into a corn cop. It was, he became a living drill tweet. But they've been using that line for days now. Oh, since when do we let the networks call everything? Bitch, in 2016, your ass didn't even have 270 when the networks projected your win and you went out and made your little speech. Yep. So you can just, you won't. Because hypocrisy means nothing to you. Right. Um, but even, it, do you know it gets even better? During his press conference, he brought out a man, uh, a witness, Oh, said he was a witness of of potential voter irregularity, maybe fraud. We don't know, but a witness. It turns out the witness is a convicted sex offender. Daryl Brooks, who said he was a GOP poll watcher, um, Trenton and. <laughs> Political insiders watch with amusement as Brooks took the podium. Brooks was incarcerated in the 1990s on charges of sexual assault, lewdness, and endangering the welfare of a minor for exposing himself to two girls ages 7 and 11. Eight-year-olds, dude. Eight-year-olds. <laughs> James Gee, Chief of Staff to U.S. Representative Bonnie Watson Coleman, D of, of New you Jersey. You in her district? She's yeah. the best. Yeah. Yeah, I know, Bar Daryl, she said. It's so fitting that he would be here. I mean, that's their kind of people. The other thing is he's he's run for election. Dar Brooks has run for new various offices, including U.S. Senate and the House of Representatives. What the fuck? Then they went they went to court with basically you remember the girl from Ferris Bueller's Day Off mm -hmm. where they asked like where Ferris Bueller was and she was like, well, my friend knows this guy who goes out with this girl who used to be friends with this girl who saw Ferris pass out at the 31 Flavors last night. They went to court with that shit. Mm -hmm. So it's going great. Yeah, the Zoom meeting from that is amazing. Now, what we're trying to piece together, what the world is trying to piece together is how the lawyer, the personal lawyer of the president of the United States ended up hosting a press conference in front of a landscaping company. <laughs> the press conference, it had nothing to do with the people who ran that landscaping company. They, they were no affiliation. They didn't even bring the owners out, nothing. They basically said, like, if anybody called us and asked us the same thing, we'd say, sure, like, why not? And now they've had to create merch because everyone's demanding merch. <laughs> so, obviously what happened, what they will not admit happened, but the obvious thing that happened, and this was after they tried to say, oh, yeah, we, we chose this place because it was close to I-95 and electric security. And, you know, and it was well, secure. What happened was, Someone attempted to book the Four Seasons and told the president they were going to book the Four Seasons. And the president tweeted they had booked the Four Seasons. When in fact they had not booked the Four Seasons. Someone fucked up and booked the wrong place. It looked like something out of Parks and Rec. It did. Or Veep. Pick one. Yeah. Like, you could see Bobby Newport mm -hmm. having these kind of problems. It, it just, it, <laughs> Abstruse says, God bless whoever at the company said, sure, why the fuck not? Yeah, right. <laughs> and then, like, Corey Lewandowski was on Twitter that afternoon being like, everybody that works at Forest Seasons Total Landscaping are total patriots. Like, did you sign an endorsement deal? <laughs> It, it was, it, this is, I mean, it's, it's no wonder this is sort of the capstone yeah. to the Trump presidency, because th this is everything we have said. We are so lucky. These people 
the the only thing that has saved us from you know completely collapsing into to irreversible fascism is the fact these people are complete imbeciles. Yeah. That is all that has saved us. The if only even a third fuck. of them were halfway competent, we'd be fucked. We would be so fucked. But no, not only is the guy, the guy at the top is an idiot, and he can't stand to be shown up by anyone else, so he has to hire idiots. Because remember, he has hired some competent people, and they have all been fired. John and Kelly. they didn't tell him what he wanted to hear. Right. Uh, John yeah. Yeah, all these all these political or, people. Yeah, they got more famous than him. Like yep. poor Dr. Fauci, who's actually an expert in the field, and he's like, I don't like how much attention that guy's getting. Oh my! If not, for, the only thing that saved us is the fact they're so bad at this. Like Jesus Christ! And it cracks me up. The people that are still on, like watching, watching the fan club cling to the last vestiges of their delusion is getting really sad. There was a, there's there's still people that are like, no, you don't even understand. He's playing like eight dimensional chess. And y'all just don't get it. There was a Twitter account. There was a Twitter account called coping MAGA, which was beautiful until they, they got, they got their fifis hurt and they mass reported it. But what it was doing was it was going around and collecting all of their shit, especially off 4chan. And it was just, it was, and they couldn't stand it. So, but the problem is when you do that, Streisand effect. So now there's yeah. like three or four different copies of that site, of that, that account doing the same thing. It's beautiful. We're just going to keep doing it. It's fun. Um, Remember the whole last four years, like the fuck your feelings t-shirts. Yeah. And if you don't like it, you can leave and you lost get over it. What happened? Uh, what move happened? Up, motherfuckers. What, what happened? All right. Now we move on to the regular stupidity. The because, comments this week are going to be amazing. And I don't give a shit. Um, so uh, back to the regular stupidity. Because, you know. We are still stupid. That has nothing to do with the Brilliant government. Stupid takes no breaks. It does not. Let's go to Omaha, somewhere in middle America. Um, <laughs> that joke's going to sail right over half the audience. Most of them. Yeah. Um, so uh, as Dan will attest, when you are using a handgun, you always assume it is loaded, even if you believe it is not. He has told me that many, many times. So if you attempt to discharge it, you point it towards something that is not alive, you just be on the, just, no. You always assume you're going to destroy whatever you're pointing it at. So you probably shouldn't point it at your leg. Omaha man was trying to make sure his gun was safe, shoots himself in the leg. Actually, no, let, let, let's be clear about here. Uh, he shot himself just above the ankle. He literally shot himself in the foot. <coughs> An Omaha man told police he was trying to make sure his handgun was safe when he shot himself in the leg. The incident occurred around 10.30 p.m. Saturday while the man was sitting in a car in a parking lot. The 26-year-old called 911 after he shot himself just above his left ankle and said he was sitting in his 2011 Chevrolet Malibu Preparing to meet friends for drinks when he decided to make sure his gun was safe. He said he removed the magazine from the gun and pointed it, quote, in a safe direction toward his feet. Spoiler alert, you didn't. Before pulling the trigger. Now, here's the thing about automatic weapons. If you take out the magazine, there is still all, one in the there is one dingy. in the chamber. Not always, yeah. but it is possible there remains one completely separate from the magazine. There is one round in the chamber. And now I love how he's sitting in his car and thought, oh well, I should just blue. You're in your for one thing, even if you didn't hit yourself, you're in your right. car. Yeah. You are in a car. Whoop. Who does this shit in a car? And then if you get out of the car, 
you're in a public parking lot, maybe, <laughs> maybe you should check your gun before you leave your house. Right? I just, just fucking... Ugh. Will says, on the plus side, he found out whether or not his gun was safe. That is true. <laughs> He's aware now. Well, like, when I, when I was g g going for my license, long, ancient, many, many eons ago, I had to go through so much shit. I had to take a course in high school. I don't even know if they do driver's ed anymore. I had to take a course in high school, and then I had to have a certain amount of time on my learner's permit, and I had to do all this written tests and all this stuff, and then I had to go to write law. I had to do so much to be yeah. allowed to operate two yeah. tons of high-velocity steel and plastic. But I can walk into Walmart tonight and come back with a shotgun. Hey, and nobody... cars have other uses. Yeah, they do. Like a car's primary function is not killing shit. Mm, That's not what it was invented for. I, I bought my pistol in Georgia. It took longer to vote than it did to get my gun. That explains a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're not a lot of things. If you're not in America, you're like, how does this <laughs> stuff happen? Ain't nobody required to learn how to use this shit. No. You can just walk in and buy one and have no fucking idea what you're doing. Now, because it's your right. Some states are more strict about than others about handguns. Handguns, they have a really big hang up over because they can be concealed. Um, some states are very strict about the handgun stuff. Others, they're not. And there are loopholes like they, we call it the gun show loophole. Where you could just no background checks, no bullshit. You walk into a gun show, you can buy a gun, you go. On. Other countries are like other other countries are just looking at us like, are you insane? And the yeah, answer the is the world is just like, why? We are insane. Yes. We're fucking insane. Next up, uh, back to my neck of the woods, people to complain about. <sighs> fucking YouTubers. I swear to God, I, I, why did I get into this? Why did I, I might just... accidentally be a part-time YouTuber in the next week or so? Cause I got myself into a thing. I, I, I joked with Allison that I would do like a Louise from Ant-Man style recap of the entire run of supernatural. <laughs> and she said no, but the rest of Twitter said yes. And now I think I have to try to do it. Oh, no. Well, you're not going to do this, though, which makes me happy. YouTuber kicked off American Airlines flight after hiding in friend's business class footwell. Now we're going to take a sec to explain what happened here, because it is very stupid. Two women were kicked off an American Airlines flight after one of them attempted to hide in the footwell of her friend's business class seat. The plan was for the friend to remain there for the entire journey, as the pair allegedly thought the stunt would, quote, drive viewers to their YouTube channel. Fellow well, passenger of Flight 772 from Dallas-Fort Worth to Miami uh, wrote about the incident in on the Flyer Talk forum. I saw the friend crawl under the J seat uh, and, and be began to watch a movie. Well, apparently the plan was for this woman's friend to remain there the entire flight. And it's something thought would drive viewers to their, their YouTube channel. Woman was reportedly discovered before takeoff after a flight attendant noticed one seat was empty, despite the fact the plane manifest was full. Okay, here's the, the problem. An announcement was made requesting the missing passenger identify herself with travelers informed the airline couldn't take off until she was located. You see, they do a head count, not just to do a head count, but to look for shenanigans. Shenanigans that could potentially explode. Right. Like if you happen to be hiding in the bathroom, assembling a thing that will kill everybody, mm -hmm. they need to know that. Or if you're supposed to be on the plane and you're suddenly not on the plane, but your luggage is still on the plane. So now right away, instead of your hee hee, this is a fun joke. You are setting off alarm bells. 
According to Miami Airport, uh, the woman tried to sneak back to her seat but was busted by flight attendants. The plane returned to the gate due to security issues. Business class pastor allegedly began, quote, screaming, she's being disrespected, did nothing wrong, paid good money for her ticket. She has a child at home waiting for her. By then, she's also taken off her mask. All of those (laughs) things were going to help. I I don't know what, what, like, lizard brain shit we have going on that thinking rising to super aggressiveness is going to help you. I don't know when we decided that was the way to go because it doesn't work. Especially not on a plane. Airplane people. We have to say this every week. It is its own little dictatorship. They have so fuck with them. They have total control over everything that happens on their airplane. If you just look at one of them funny. If you twitch your eye in a way they don't like, they are fully empowered to remove your ass. Now, you might be able to complain about it later. You might get the company to apologize or some shit. But that's still not going to change the fact your ass is going off the plane. Like it or not. Imagine paying for a business class ticket, which is not cheap. No. Paying for the extra leg room and extra luxury of a business class ticket to curl up in a ball for the lulls. After the removal of the pastors, the service departed three hours behind schedule. So everyone on that plane hates you. And I bet they have five videos on their YouTube channel talking about how unfair it was. Yeah, probably. And calling on everyone to boycott that airline. It's got like 13 views. Yeah. I, I oh my just... God, it was like so unfair. I was like, don't you even know who I am? I have a thousand uh... subscribers. <laughs> Uh, well, next up, um, there are some things, basic stuff to stealing a car, you know, um, what to steal, when to steal, how to steal, what's worth it, what's not, but probably the cardinal rule of stealing a car is don't leave your full name and contact information. (laughs) With the people you stole the car from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Altoona woman is facing charges after she failed to return return a U-Haul for more than 40 days. Police report that 37-year-old Donna uh, Kolobov, I think, am I saying that right, Kolobov? That'd be my guess, yeah. Kolobov, uh, was arrested and charged on November 3rd after the owner of a U-Haul filed, uh, called to file a report on a stolen van. Rented the van on September 21st, 2020, and paid a $90 deposit. She failed to return the van on the 23rd and allegedly changed her phone number and moved. U-Haul was unable to contact her at this point. Now, I bet she thought she had just, she was brilliant. All she had to do, perfect crime. All she had to do, if they can't find her, they can't catch her. She seemed to forget that we have something called the police. Yeah. (laughs) They call police on the 40 and and the police, while they not might not respond to you or me losing like a bike or getting their house broken into because they don't often. That's the reality of it. Well, if you're a business. Oh, they jump on that shit. She also seemed to forget that U-Haul fans have giant orange stripes painted on them. (laughs) Called the police on the 41st day to file a report. The van was found and they contacted a family member <laughs> and saw the van pull in behind the house and park. Colobo <laughs> was taken into custody. The victim was assessed mileage and damage. The amount owed totaled $4,000 while damage to the roof of the van would be assessed at a later date. Facing charges of theft of motor vehicle and theft of services. What the li- What the fuck is wrong with you? Was she, like, using it as a tiny house? Wait, was she just, like, you know what? I, I want a car, but I can't afford a car, so now I have a car. I have a car what now. What damage to the, to the roof? Didn't mention how that happened, but yeah. Yeah. 
I'm betting dumbass drove under a low overpass. Possibly. Yeah, that can happen. People do not. They don't read those damn signs, which, man, when I, I have, I have rented a U-Haul several times uh, for moving. Um, and one of the, when I got one of those damn things, I was paranoid as shit. Yeah. About everything I could possibly collide into. Every time I went under an overpass, anytime I just, I'm like, oh, fuck. Every Even like the highway time. signs that are like 20 feet off the ground, you're like, <laughs> I'm not used to driving something that big, but yeah, like, should, <sighs> why? I'm actually surprised they didn't have a GPS in the vehicle, right? Because a lot of them do now. But it just you left your name and inform you left. And we call that evidence. But she like moved. <laughs> They come find you. You are so dumb. I'm like, you didn't even uh, move far. Well, the, the, you didn't even cross a state line and make it hard. Like you didn't even leave the city. Speaking of not making it hard, oh my, well, all right, not like that. But um, this is from this is from Washington and uh, getaway cars. Also fun with I illegality and and driving around. Um, getaway cars. One thing you want a getaway car to be is nondescript. Um, you want it to yeah. blend into traffic. You want it to say, not have a sofa on top. <laughs> Deputies responding to an armed robbery Tuesday morning at an Oregon hardware store didn't have to go far to find the getaway car. It was a dark color Mazda CX-9 with a black sofa strapped on top. Black was that where the rest of the crew was supposed to ride? <laughs> Clackamas County Sheriff's official wrote, uh, deputies spotted the car near the Ace Hardware in Happy Valley, then gave chase when the driver refused to pull over. They pursued the car, still carrying the sofa, north on Interstate 205. The driver finally stopped the car and dashed away on foot, was quickly caught. Deputies arrested Joseph Tyler Johnson, 34, of Milwaukee. They found a pistol near the stopped Mazda CX-9 and discovered the car itself and then reported stolen. What so, about the sofa? I know. What happened here? Did Was you the sofa stolen too? Did you <laughs> steal a car with a sofa on top? Or did you steal a car and then put a sofa on top and then rob a hardware Neither sequence of events is good. <laughs> Neither is good. What the fuck? But I feel like the first one is worse. Yeah. Oh, Baconator. Sofa King ridiculous. <laughs> Boss, how's the robbery going? So far, so good. <laughs> that was monkey shines. Uh, I, I just... I just and I'm going to see, what is a Mazda CX-9? I, I I don't know car models. I'm a terrible, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm terrible about that stuff. I don't give a shit about car models. I'm like, does have four wheels? Does have, does it go? All right, let me see. Oh, oh, wow. It's one of those little almost SUVs, but not quite. Oh, a crossover vehicle? Yeah. Let's, let's get a picture those. here. They're, they're all ugly. Like, none of them look good. Right, let's have a look here. The, yeah, that's what it looks like. That's that's one of those. Someone tied a sofa to the top of that? They're like, if you took my car, I drive a Honda Fit and a fucking Hummer and put them in Jeff Goldblum's teleport machines and they got smashed together. It's a sport utility. It's it's a it, you put a sofa on top of that. Yeah, people are like the channel like, how do you put a sofa on that? Yeah, because it's the same problem you would have with my car is you have like a five foot windshield that's at a serious yeah. angle. So you don't have a lot of roof to work with. And you thought you could, bitch, you thought you could draw, you could get away in that. You with was, a sofa on. With a sofa. Like every bit of weight you put on a car <sighs> hurts the horsepower. <laughs> I don't know a lot about cars, but yeah. I understand basics of like weight and speed sofa's what two three hundred pounds yeah yeah and the heavier something is the harder is it for go past 
mess, fast, room, vroom. That whole sentence was a mess. <laughs> but you get my point. Oh, was it, uh, Clue says, I have to know, was it sideways or long ways? <laughs> <laughs> Were they driving around looking like a hammerhead shark? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, all right. Well, finally. <laughs> well, finally tonight. Um, this one is, of course, Florida, because you know. What would be a week without Florida? And they tried to fuck this up for us. They didn't, but they tried to fuck it up they again. They tried real hard. Yet again, fucking Florida. Um. So, I have been upset with customer service. I'm not gonna lie. I've some I've lost my temper once or twice in my life with customer service. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but normally the focus of my ire is with that corporate entity and not with some random dude's truck in the parking lot. Woman angry about lack of breakfast at Jacksonville Hotel takes truck, crashes it into pond. Someone needs a Snickers. <laughs> Woman is facing several charges after an incident at a hotel on Jacksonville's south side ended with a truck submerged in a, in a retention pond. Um, according to the report, a hotel employee told police a woman, identified by police as Marlo Walton, 34, began arguing with her in the lobby because there was no breakfast available at the hotel and because the pool was closed because of the pandemic. Man waiting in line in the hotel lobby told police when he saw the woman yelling with the uh, guest service receptionist, he told her to settle down. Because nothing calms down an angry person faster the report than telling them to calm down. The report redacts what happens next, but he goes on to say the man was, quote, in fear for his life and left the lobby. The man went to the parking lot, got inside his vehicle, but he saw the woman in the parking lot. He parked the vehicle and ran off. So she pulled a Terminator on his ass. Why didn't you drive away? I know, right? You were in a truck. You were in a truck. When he Okay, so not everybody here is smart, but of course, this is Florida. When he came back, he saw his vehicle was gone. Police said Walton took off in the truck and ended up in the retention pond across the street from the hotel. The truck was partially submerged. Walton was arrested and faces charges for theft of a motor vehicle, criminal mischief, uh, battery, assault, and aggravated battery. So she hit somebody. Somebody. During the arrest, the uh, report said she became, quote, irate and began kicking the back seat of the patrol vehicle. What? I also want to point out, it said that the incident started at 5 p.m. Mm-hmm. And she wanted I breakfast. I'm a night owl. I sleep all day because I'm up till 4 or 5 a.m. I don't fucking expect breakfast at 5 p.m. when I get up. Like, if you want breakfast at 5 p.m., get your ass over to a Waffle House. Right. Find a fucking Denny's. Like, I know that hotels, if I'm in a hotel, the breakfast ends at like 9 or 10. And usually I'm with this poor sweet man who will go to Starbucks for me when I wake up at noon. I, I okay, who serves breakfast at five p. Right, like I have been to conventions at hotels, hotels and motels. We have, we both have, yeah. many of them. And w the rule is, if you don't get your ass out of bed at like the butt crack of dawn, if you want that continental breakfast, you get down yeah. there between six and six ten a.m. And if you aren't, then the breakfast it vanishes. It's like it's like Cinderella. Which is why I always go to cons with a box of granola bars in my in my suitcase because I know I'm not going to do that. That shit's like Cinderella's coach. It like poof, yeah. it's fucking gone. There's a pumpkin left, and it's not even an edible one. It's well, a plastic one. Well, because a horde of ang of hungry gamers swarms through like locusts. They do. They do. Um, yeah. but it just and like I've been hangry. Mm hmm. I once scared the crap out of my boss at my job because I was hangry and he said the wrong thing and I ripped his head off in front of everybody. And I'm lucky I kept that job and here forever <laughs> after at that job, all I had to say was I was hungry and he would basically do whatever I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> but I've never been hangry enough. And I get fucking hangry. 
I've never been hangry enough to beat the shit out of somebody and then drive their truck into a lake. This is kind of like an incredible Hulk moment because, you know, yeah. the, she got set off and then you just you got her attention like like a fucking T-Rex. You caught its attention. <laughs> if you don't move, it hits you. Did I get one of the free Starbucks? I don't fuck with free cup Friday on Starbucks. If they're having some event, I don't go during that event because I used to work there and I don't want the flashbacks. I don't need a cup that bad. I but I think both the people involved in this are not exactly bright individuals. Because yeah, like you were in your truck. Just drive away. Drive away. She's not going to be able to catch you. I promise. No. She could Unless try. She was a Terminator. Yeah. But then she wouldn't be worried about breakfast. <laughs> Is, what? I What happened? Tara's spirit animal is some weird combination of hippopotamus and velociraptor. <laughs> like, like whenever I've been in a situation like this, my, my, my desire is to get an outcome that will get right. me closer to what I want. Not just to cause pain and chaos. Not just, yeah, not just to flip the fuck out and let everybody know my name, which is what happened here. Because, like, now you're in jail and you still didn't get breakfast. No, I mean, you could get breakfast in jail, but I'm not sure you want it. Yeah. And they're not going to be super quick about it or worry about your order. And she told, she did that shit on purpose. She drove it into the pond on purpose. She wouldn't try to steal it. No, no. She was there to destroy. She was in a righteous fucking fury. And that could also really backfire because... I mean, water exerts pressure. And like... Send that guy in the channel. Send that guy in the channel says, "If you steal the truck, you can go to IHOP." <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't. She couldn't solve any. Like, there were so many different solutions to this problem, even illegal ones, and yet didn't avail yourself of them. So yeah, I get the, the first thing we learned this week is, while it might feel good, yeah, to, to YOLO on everybody. Um, it's not going to get you your, your, your scrambled eggs. I'm going to solve your problem. Um, fucking hell. we've learned that, uh, if you steal a car to act, to get away from a crime scene, don't pick the one with furniture attached. No. <laughs> also, also we've learned if you steal a car, don't leave them your name. You're a copy of your driver's license. All of it. Even if you moved, even if she fucking moved, they had her driver's license number. Yeah. They're it, all, going to find you. This is the fucking. We've learned just because you're a YouTuber doesn't mean you can do whatever the fuck you want. I know for some reason that rule doesn't seem to apply to anyone whose last name is Paul. <laughs> I don't know why. <sighs> But it's sure the fuck doesn't apply to you. Yeah. Um, we've learned it actually is possible to shoot yourself in the foot. Like, in every sense of the term. Uh, and finally, we've learned <clears throat> the president's, the, the lawyer for the president of the United States of America was able to book a press conference at a landscaping company that had nothing to do with why they were booking the press conference. And everyone went along with it. And that's a thing that happened for real in America. Like, Somebody in five years is going to be sitting down to write a history text. And they're going to have a fucking aneurysm. 